All right, well, let's go ahead and, and get started. Um, welcome everybody. I put the minutes in the chat and I put together an agenda for today. Why don't we start by kind of asking who would like to facilitate next week's meeting? <laughs> we don't seem to do that. And then um, we could also ask at the end because I know a lot of people kind of join throughout. Um, so is there anybody who would like to facilitate next week's meeting? I can if no one wants to. Okay. I guess we, we always kind of facilitate by committee, but it's just kind of nice, I think, for the facilitator to put together an agenda. You know what I mean? Just to kind of have a few things on the docket. So thank you, Elizabeth. All right, I will add myself here. All right. All right, so the first thing that I put on the agenda is outside of facilitating for next week is DNI badging. So I know we talk about this a lot, but I think we have to get kind of serious about um, reviewers. So we're starting to get, so for, for those on the call that maybe aren't familiar with the DNI badging program, so we have um, DNI event metrics. So there are metrics that events can consider when thinking about DNI in the work that they're doing and the events can apply for a diversity and inclusion badge and the review process is done in an open and transparent way um, so that we can kind of constructively work towards um, trying to understand and document how events are attending to things like speaker demographics or attendee demographics, family friendliness, diversity access tickets and uh, code of conduct at the event. I think that's the full list. Isn't that right, Matt? Yeah, I think so. I, I think. So. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, so it's been it's actually been uh, going really, really, really well. Um, we just got our fifth request from OpenJS World yesterday. Um, so and it's been a very productive process, I'd say, to, to this point, um, really constructive and a lot of great reviews. I think the events are quite happy with the process. Is that your take, Matt? That's kind of the sense I get. Yeah, I generally send out a thank you after they've applied and gotten a badge and uh, mm -hmm. they generally send out a thank you back. So that's kind of nice. So it is, it is nice. And it's not a tremendous amount of overhead, but I, so I think we need to get kind of serious as to how we think about recruiting and training reviewers to help in this process. So, I mean, if, if 10 events becomes, or I'm sorry, if five events becomes 10, becomes 15, becomes 20, um, I, I think we have to legitimately think about this. Um, and I put the list of current reviewers here. Um, somebody put more on the way. Um, so Ruth has yeah. been great. Um, Neophytos has been great. Anita's been great. So these are a lot of really good people. Um, Matt, do you have comments on this? Yeah, so I'm reached out to Elizabeth and is coming into the review system, uh, actually probably today, as long as the orientation goes well. And then we have another person that's also interested in being a reviewer that I've been reaching out to or been talking to. So we have more on the way. How many would that add to the list here? Just two. Just two? Yeah, well, not just two. I, I mean, two is big <laughs> for us. Okay. I had one more person reach out um, that was looking for more information on how it all uh, worked. And I did not hear back from them. So I might just touch base with them again. Um, I don't know if the if it was a little too overwhelming for them um, or, or what uh, kind of was the, the blocker, but I'll see if I can find out. Okay. Um, and I think so that would be two to three then potentially new reviewers. I, I don't think we should really let up on this. So Matt or Elizabeth, do you have additional thoughts as to how we can continue to recruit people in this regard? Because I know that Elizabeth, you had posted it on the list, the 
diversity and inclusion list that Justin is, um, I think, managing. Yes, and that's where one of the leads came from. And then the other okay. one was uh, from a post on Twitter. So um, I think maybe just continuing to do that periodically, like I don't want to be a nag or obnoxious about it. So, <laughs> so I think we need to be careful, you know, but um, okay. yeah, I, I can also reach out to individual groups like uh, people at Women Who Code or, or okay. other groups like that, if there's anyone that's interested. Um, okay. Uh, I, I'm not volunteering, so I'm sorry if I'm interrupting, but uh, how, does it take about an hour to train somebody? Yeah, orientation and, sessions are one-on-one -on -one and they take about an hour, yeah. And it takes about an hour to badge an event? Yeah, I'd say like one to two, um, but yeah, that happens. It should happen a lot more rarely once we have the um, review, more reviewers in place. Okay, thank you. So yes, so Lawrence, yeah, I would say the amount of commit time is one to two hours. It kind of, ha it's it happens through a GitHub issue. So it kind of happens over the period of a couple of days, but the actual time spent kind of going back is about an hour or two. Okay. Um, okay. I'm, I'm processing to, to be able to uh, give some comments later on. In Perfect. Okay. That's great. Because the challenge here, Lawrence, is that with DNI, we really want it not to be like a, just an automated process, but somebody providing human reflection on the efforts. And so we just, we need people kind of like an academic review. We need people to kind of reflect on what the events are saying, how they're Kind of representing these these issues um, and to make it kind of a constructive process so that's that's kind of where we're at here okay um so elizabeth you had mentioned um is it girls who code uh women who code yeah women who just, code. that just came off the top of my head there's there's numerous of those kinds of groups that um, tailor to diversity and inclusion efforts in okay. uh, technology and open source. So I think that they might have some good candidates that care about this stuff and want to make the world a better place in that way. Okay. Do you, so I can, I put a yeah, few in the, I was gonna say put a few in the minutes here that might be organizations yeah. to reach out to? Yeah, for sure. Okay. I, I think in, in a case like this, initial reviewers are going to want to not sort of go outside the parameters that have been set historically. So helping people understand the culture around these reviews, mm -hmm. which is harder to write down, I think I think is important so that, because I think an initial reviewer might be intimidated, not wanting to be overly harsh or overly permissive, but particularly not overly harsh. And, and some, I think part of the point of the review is to give people, uh, you know, genuine feedback. And it's, it's hard yep. to teach people that that's the aim um, with just like a document. So there, there'll probably have to be some high contact, like 15 minutes of that with each new reviewer, I would think. Uh, so the question, one question I have is, are you going to, to event producers to do reviews? So you can't review your own event, but can you review somebody else's event? At this point, the answer would be yes. I mean, we haven't put a limitation on who could be a reviewer, mm -hmm. you know, so if people have an interest in being part of that process, so it is in short to answer your question, yes, that's possible, but we haven't done that yet. Okay. Um... I mean, that's, a, that's right. That's again, like if I liken this to the academic review process, right? That's the old trick, right? <laughs> Look for people who have submitted papers <laughs> to your yeah. journal and then <laughs> and then consider them as, as future reviewers. And that's where you go to the, all these or, organiz, organizations that care about diversity. You go to them and they're every, organ, every event they've spoken to, mm -hmm. <laughs> they, the, the, that organizer, has is a constituency that would be interested in um, doing it. No, oh, that's fair. Um, Matt, did you have a comment on Sean's comment too, just with respect to kind of? Yeah, I care a lot about onboarding. <laughs> that's one of my big things is that I, I really like to make sure that people feel welcome when they come into a no event. I might, it might be worth asking them about their experience afterward, but during the orientation session, I do try to be as personal as possible when it comes to like 
answering questions um, or or being um, being a human and explaining things to people and saying like this may need worked on or um, we're doing a release pretty soon here in March stuff like that to make sure that they want to do it this this review process and will commit to it. Uh, it's just really important that they uh, that they understand it from the human perspective of like this is why we care about it and this is what we're doing uh, is it's like most of the orientation. I'm thinking too to Sean's point maybe you could signal um, that like during a review process if a reviewer has a question on how to respond you know what I mean like what's the appropriate I have I'm happy to talk to, you know, provide guidance. I'm sure Elizabeth would too, speaking on your behalf, Elizabeth, but you know, just how to kind of, Matt, you too, you've seen this often enough now, right? That also signaling to potential reviewers that, you know, once once you get an assigned in a room, once you get assigned a review, it's not just you alone out there. That if you have questions about how the process is working or kind of how to respond to a comment in an issue, there are people that are there to help you as well as a reviewer. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think uh, so that's something we need to push more when we do the orientation. I've got one today, so it'd be a good, a good primer. But um, to, to say like, if you have questions, be you're totally welcome to ask those questions in, 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 in a public or private space, basically. But um, but to to just be curious is really important in this process. Yes, and we're there to support you through the process as you're learning. Yeah, I think I think that support would that that message of support will will help. I th I think it's hard to be kind and thoughtful, but also at times critical to help an organization improve or advance. It's it's an art form, and it doesn't it didn't come naturally to me, uh, and I think it doesn't come naturally to most people. To, to offer that, you know, suggestions for improvement as those things occur. And so ha knowing you can call on someone who's experienced in how this works, I think will be enormously helpful. I agree with both you, Sean, and, um, and Justin here saying FAQs. Um, we've got actually, so we had, when we were first doing the pilot studies or pilot, you know, situations, we, um, we had, an FAQ section that's actually still there, um, but it's kind of needs more visibility on, for the reviewers and the moderators' perspective. Um, I think it's a good thing to add things to, yeah. Just oh, I got those in the notes, yeah. Okay, um, so thank you, every. This is a really good talk because I think this is a very critical issue. Um, and one, I think Matt, you had made a comment, maybe, I don't know if it was just to me or in some other call, but well, like we, we, I don't think we can be too prepared in this area, right? It's not a bad thing to have too many reviewers <laughs> that are committed and, and um, to, to this effort. So it's a good thing. Um, I did, I did wonder, is there anything that we should be thinking about with respect to incentivizing reviewers? So you know how like we um, do the podcasts, like Elizabeth, you send out people who do the podcast, I think they get a handwritten note and a sticker, you know, and just a, a small bit of outreach. Yeah, I yes. think we have a release coming up the beginning of March to the end of March, and then we do another release of, um, of updated badging processes. So I think that'd be a great time to say, hey, thanks for being a reviewer in this process. So maybe like doing handwritten notes, doing maybe we could make a make some stickers, get those to Matt or Elizabeth or whomever, something just <laughs> these small tokens seem to go a long way. Yeah, the tokens of appreciation seem to go a long way. Maybe we could start that for the badging program too. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds like a great idea. I love that idea. And I also have a confession that I'm a little bit behind on those. So if it's up to me, you might want to have somebody that's a little less of a bottleneck in that area, but um, I'm happy to do it. If nobody else can do it, I'm more than happy to do it. Cool, Matt, what do you think? Could, do you think you could do it, Matt? 
Yeah, I could. I, I don't know where I would necessarily send them, so I might ask where can I send a note. Uh, where we can did, I yeah, send we it? Yeah, yeah, we have to get. Do. We have to get an address somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just send it to wherever they work. <laughs> no, but yeah. I, I, I will. Are, um, sorry, go ahead, Elizabeth. No, sorry. I was just going to say some people aren't super comfortable giving that information out and that's totally fine. Um, but I do have a note that I send that basically explains like how I will use the data is essentially and like that it's safe and that it, the only reason that I'm asking for it is so that we can send them a little note. So yeah. um, I can send you that if you like. And I, I can't imagine that it would be a huge number of ones that you would have to send out. I mean, like that we're talking, you know, like a handful of people. So it shouldn't be terrible. Well, we have a little bit of lead time. Do we want to use um, some kind of funds to order a chaos greeting cards we could use for multiple purposes? Well, yeah, I could. That was kind of, I mean, we have the funds, like I have the funds here at the university that if we needed to order, I don't know, what do you send Elizabeth? A sticker? Poker chip? A, chaos badging some, stickers? Yeah, a poker chip that is specific to chaos cast, um, a little note that's specific to chaos cast and um, some chaos cast stickers so uh, i think there's also a chaos sticker Nah, no i take that back it's just chaos cast stuff but um if we had more generic chaos stuff that would be amazing um and i think we could use it for a wide variety of purposes because we do have quite a lot of volunteers across the, the organization i would love to see like something cool that we you know could send even if it's for like you volunteered for the badging program so you get this one sticker and then if you volunteer for something else you get a different sticker you know like you kind of collect them all kind of thing sounds like badging <laughs> yeah right <laughs> so yeah, i'm, I'm thinking I, i've always had this idea and we've got an svg of it actually that sala made but it's a dni badging and there's the purple and it's this ally that we that we can turn into a sticker that's just my my personal opinion but um I'll look into this. Elizabeth, do you want to look into this with me and figure out what we can do? Sure, of course. That'd be great. Awesome. Matt, if you have that SVG, can you put it in the minutes here? Sure, I'll have to find it. It might be on my old computer, but... Okay. Yeah. Um, and then you can loop me into that too, because I would have the funds. Okay. And it would be... And, it, and I think maybe too, it's easiest if we keep things that are... Um, able to be put in just regular envelopes <laughs> that don't require a trip to the post office. You know. All right. Cool. Um, so somebody say Matt, uh, I'm taking notes. coordinate to get small gifts to reviewers. We could even, I mean, I was thinking we could extend it so that if an individual, um, you know, has over 10 events badged or something like that, I don't know, you know, people who are really participate, not just reviewers, but are also participating um, in the program. Okay, cool. Um, any other comments on DNI badging? I really wanted to address this and just kind of make sure we're all kind of moving in a really positive way. All right, great. Thank you, everybody. Um, and thanks for getting that in there, Elizabeth. And I agree, I think actually doing some Doing some more direct outreach would be great. Solicit open source diversity. I'm reading Justin's comment. So Justin, I know you're muted, but would this be different than the mail list? You could type it somewhere. <laughs> you can just yeah, type yes or the open source diversity comment. Yeah. So you had that comment at the top of page two, just in terms of how to solicit. Yeah, so there's a forum, but also a more active uh, telegram and signal chat for the groups that I could share some outreach in. Just knowing um, what the call to action to make is would be helpful. So I can gotcha. share the right links or make sure that I'm pointing people the right way. That would be helpful. And maybe just a little bit about the program and like what the commitments are. Um, gotcha. But I, I know there would definitely be at least a, a couple folks who, I'm, who would probably want to learn more 
Um, so I'm happy to make those plugs or if someone else wants to do them, sometimes I think it's more exciting when someone other than me posts on that forum, but hey, um, happy to do it either way. <laughs> cool, thank you. Um, so it's a, it's a small document to kind of capture the commitment. Thanks. Call to action, that kind of stuff. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for offering that, Justin. Uh, all right, so moving on, I'm down at this part. So with respect to a lot of you are familiar, we're doing a uh, DNI reflection on the chaos project itself. So taking a look at our own DNI practices and looking to capture this so other projects can do uh, this type of reflection as well. We've been talking about this for a while. So I think a lot of people are pretty familiar with this. And I honestly, just a special thanks to Justin. Hey, Justin, I'm, I'm clapping for you. Uh, who has agreed to serve as the liaison between kind of the chaos community and the external reviewers. I think it was really important that we have a person who is familiar with the chaos project um, and can kind of serve as that in, in that role. So Justin, thank you so much for agreeing to participate. We're really, really, really happy. And I'll send out an email a little bit later and we can kind of coordinate things moving forward. Sorry, I cut Thanks. you off. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Right on. Oh, and I have a terrible connection now, so I'm not sure if this is. A, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm never sure about when I'm cutting. I hear you off. just. I hear you just fine. So okay, cool. <laughs> All um, right, right on. I have a test case in terms of surveys. I'm gonna pull, paste something in here. Um, if you guys could look at it for a second, um, go to section three there should be two or three questions and i basically was looking at some of the metrics that we were working on while i created these two or three questions and basically they have to do with diversity that's specifically why i'm showing you this in this conversation i'm not and and then we the next part of this this uh, conversation is some of the pull requests. So that's why I'm bringing it up here. Okay, cool. So what's the, um, Lawrence, so, what is, this is a survey I'm guessing you're putting yeah, together. Yeah, so this is a survey, it's a client of mine. So it's side lift as a, of, ma of maintainers, people who maintain projects. Yep. And so section three is starts, uh, do you think that open source suffers from a lack of diversity? Uh, I don't, that's whatever it is. Um, the, ne the next question is, which of the, which of the following ways are the best ways to, um, to improve diversity? And which of the following things are, do you actually plan to, to do or have done? to just in general, it doesn't say it has to deal with diversity, but mo most of them are related to diversity. Um, and so one, of the, so one of the things, the reason why I thought of this right now was uh, Justin, you were talking about, he, Matt was saying, you were gonna think about how we could uh, work with people externally. One of the things I was looking at here was what do we ask? I don't know. One of the things I was struggling with is in terms of actually dealing with the accessibility um, issues. Uh, so accessibility uh, for the documentation, diverse um, and inclusivity of, of information and communication. And how do we actually validate that, that let's say chaos is doing something about that. And the accessibility was a big issue because um, how do we do, how do you do stuff that's besides just um, saying that it's a uh, machine readable 
that's dealing with uh, people with sight impairments versus other other accessibility issues. So Lawrence, are these questions available to to work from? Are these kind of internal private questions at the moment? These are these are questions that if you have if you think they're bad questions or you have feedback, tell me them. They're gonna go live in a couple of days. Okay. Um, but these are things to steal from. Um, they're open source questions, <laughs> if, if that's what you mean. That was kind of the question, right? Um, I, yeah, didn't, no, I didn't want to tread into an area. Of... No, they're open source questions. I, I mean, honestly, this is, um, I, I, I take, I, I'm, I, I took the questions, a lot of the questions that from Frank Nagel and uh, the Linux Foundation Harvard project. I've, I've been building on things over time. I try to use as much as similar questions framework as possible. So there's, you can compare things unless those questions were uh, poorly worded. Um, well, I can, I'll take a look at these, probably not right now. As yeah. I... No, um, and uh, so no, we can move on. I just wanted to share well, thank, that. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing. Um, sorry, I'll let you go back to your agenda. I Totally, no, thank you for, <laughs> thank you for sharing. It's. <laughs> And so I, I just, I, I think this is great. And I'll, like I said, I'll try to take a look at them kind of after this meeting. Yeah, um, so we'll see if I have any comments. Uh, so the agenda was you were, you were at, who were at um, Justin, you were. Yep, so, yep. So right now, so we're into the metrics review period. So this is just so people know, right? The chaos project releases metrics on a twice a year cadence um, and as part of that cadence, the working groups put metrics forward, right? And then there's a, a comment period where people provide comments or provide feedback on the metrics. And we try to work to incorporate that feedback or uh, take that feedback as it might be more appropriate in a second metric. You know what I mean? We try to kind of work through, um, it's almost like a review period, right? So there are a couple here that are associated with uh, diversity and inclusion, and I'll open these. So the first one, now I'll share my screen. All right, so the first one here is on uh, chat platform inclusivity. And the comment, I think the most recent comment right now is one that is coming from Ray Paik. So can you all take a look at that real quickly? Does anybody have an immediate comment on this? in terms of a comment? I at least can speak for the first part um, around okay. persistent connections. Like even though like there is a valid point there that yes, like IRC does not ha necessarily have persistent connections by default, unless you use something like a bouncer. The point to me is still valid that it's about synchronous communication, real time okay. chat. Like even in IRC, even if you might not always have persistent connections and maybe you can't follow up with someone right away, you're still having conversations, usually in real time versus something like a mailing list, which is going to be asynchronous. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? It does make sense. So do you think the comment here is um, still captured effectively in the metric and it might just be a wording issue? Um, I'd be curious to know, like, if Ray has like a specific thought on like, is there something inclusive or not inclusive about platforms with persistent connections or not? Like there, there might be a degree of truth there, but it would just be helpful to know, like, what is he thinking about specifically, or could he unpack that a little bit more? Okay. So maybe, um, like just adding 
like, is there a specific area in the metric? Around like persistent or non-persistent connections. Like if that's something that he thinks we should look at more closely and why, or um, at least that's my question. At least I just like, I'm just curious. I'm just trying to understand like what issue does he see around chat platforms with persistent connections and is there a way we could better address that? Am I saying this right, Justin? See my comment down below. Yeah, um, I think I think that's fine. I it just it might help locate it a little bit. That's all. I think, in my opinion, that's uh, if you, if you don't maybe it's not. There's two different questions. One is is the communication platform an obstacle to um, involvement in the project? That's a diversity and inclusion question. So each different type of method of communication can be an obstacle. So maybe I or so a different type of chat platform can be a different type of obstacle. That's one thing. Then secondly, it's Than looking specifically at chat pl platforms itself. So reason why I'm saying the type of communication method is because just looking at it through a spectrum of email, uh, video, um, a chat, there's a spectrum of different ways to, to communicate. And when we're asking is it um, is it a persistent connection or not? That's um, just that's just along the spectrum of the technologies, and and that's only relevant in the context of is it helping or hurting in the diversity of communication? One and then broader speaking outside of the scope of this working group, is it helping or hurting in terms of the health of the community? I mean, that's, those are the basic questions. So I think that's the way we should be looking at it. Um, and if you frame it that way, we could structure the investigation in a very healthy way. <laughs> so Lawrence, do you think that the comments here, the ones that were posted a couple days ago, kind of kind of raise this issue, or I, I I agree that we don't I don't care about the number. I think that the number of active chat platforms, the number of active, the number of platforms that are used methods of communication can decrease the effectiveness of any one method of communication. I think that's a valid theory, unless there's a way to integrate them all. In other words, if people are using Twitter and Mastodon and a thousand other things, unless they're, it's not, none of them are gonna be effective unless there's, uh, or if you're using GitHub and Apache and, um, GitLab, et cetera, unless there's mirroring, it's not really effective. So that's a decent question. Okay. That's good. Um, I, I was maybe, just going to, oh, sorry. Yep. Sorry. John. No, no, go um, ahead. To follow up to Lawrence's point, I, I do agree that I think having um, too many can dilute the, the communications, and then some people are following one of them and not others, and things get discussed across. But I also think that there is some helpfulness to having to allowing people to communicate and engage in the way that they are most comfortable so i think like like here at chaos we have you know our our face-to-face -face calls we have the mailing list we have issues and, and it is a lot but also i think it allows people to engage 
um, in different ways and, and whatever works for them. So I, I don't know that we're necessarily making a judgment on like what the golden number of communication platforms should be. I think we're just asking them to be aware of it and to like enumerate it in some way to help their own awareness of what they're doing. Is it, is that right? It, that was kind of my take on why we asked this question in the first place, not to pass a judgment, just to like put it out there so that they kind of keep track of it because they may not even realize if they, if they, you know, have 10, they may not, it, it might sneak up on them, you know? So I don't know, it, just my, my take. That's fair. Okay. Oh, Justin, you, you did it for me. So never mind. Yeah, I got you covered. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? Where, where did this come from? But it's you. All right. All right, cool. Um, thank you, Justin. And thank you, Lawrence. And thank you, Elizabeth. Let's, let's maybe see what Ray comes back with on this. And we'll just kind of take it one step at a time before we widen it out too much. All right. Um, By the way, I just wanted to mention on that issue, the release candidate does is 404 at this point. Uh, the link to the Chaos Community website. Uh, where, what is this? The release candidate at? Yeah. Okay, can you put? I'll mention it in the issue, yeah. Yeah, can you, can you just and maybe ping Kevin? Because he kind of helps make those connections. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, the next one, share my screen again here. So the next one was also open from Ray a couple days ago. And this is on documentation accessibility. And honestly, all that he is asking for here is that with respect to documentation accessibility, we maybe broaden the range of things we think about when we think about documentation. So he was just suggesting that there was this matrix for surveying community members and the matrix just seemed focused on governance and community. Um, and so maybe adding a few questions to the matrix about documentation associated with say software installation procedures or documentation associated with how you would do feature development or architecture overview or user guides, these kind of things. So I, this one is pretty, pretty straightforward to me. Seems valid. I think so too. So he's just really kind of expanding the scope. Does anybody else have any comments on this? Yeah, it seemed, seemed well within bounds. Um, yeah, I'll make, one. okay. I had a cut. Can't see where it is. I had a comment above that. I remember. Oh correctly. yeah. It's, oh, there it is. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. It was just difference between information accessibility and document accessibility. As I probably wasn't in a in a meeting where you probably already covered this. This this meeting took like this is like a year long meeting. So okay. <laughs> so when you say meeting, okay. it, would be, it would be in quotes. <laughs> oh, you've already dealt with it, so we can move on. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll I'll make a PR. Yeah. Just I we're we're slowly working away. So at one point, I think we had. Um, just like documentation as its own metric. Mm -hmm. And we quickly realized that, yeah, that's a little too broad. Um, and it's been surprising how, at least to me, how challenging thinking through uh, issues related to documentation has been. So um, <laughs> maybe that's all I'll say to that. It's just, it's been surprising how much there is behind behind documentation. 
So. Okay. Yeah. That's fun. That's why I'm trying to keep my mouth shut as much as I can, so I uh, don't uh, stop the process. Well, and in in um, maybe two, this was kind of the the point too that I I don't know if you caught this earlier, Lawrence, but like sometimes when we're doing reviews on the metrics, if if documentation um, accessibility isn't quite capturing what you think it should be captured, it might result in a candidate for another metric. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if it's about information available about the project or information available from the project, you know what I mean? Like, we happy happy to think about that too. Oh, this was I. You know, I uh, I don't have time. I'm a sporadic contributor here, so I'll, I'll take, <laughs> take what like you get from. <laughs> I just I wanted to let you know the door is open to continue to think through these things. So, all right. Okay, good. Um, stop my share. I'm always, I always stop my share when I move tabs. <laughs> it's a habit when things are being recorded. Um, all right, so maybe the last one, and I think this will maybe be it for the day. I'm just going to make a note here. All right, so the last one here, this is Project Burnout. And Lawrence, you have had quite a few comments on this. Um, so, they're mostly all the same. OK, well, and then we're trying to incorporate them. So they've been really good. So I, I think maybe what came up, could somebody remind me, Elizabeth or Justin or Amy, who was ever on the call last week, um, with respect to the comments that you were bringing forward, Lawrence, I think our goal was to get the current state of project burnout largely um, uh, released, basically released as part of this review cycle, because mm -hmm. the comments that you make are, are fairly substantive. Is that the right mm -hmm. word? <laughs> I feel like I said that word too long, but... Um, and really start addressing your points, your comments more point by point and maybe breaking it out into a couple different PRs okay. that we could start really thinking about project burnout um, as an evolving metric after the next release. Does that make sense? Because there, there were some fairly, sub, sub, fairly substantial changes, I'll use that word, because I know that's the right word. Yeah, I totally, I... Um... Yes, um, and uh, <laughs> sim simply put, Thank yes you. is. Um... So it ended up being fairly a fairly large because, like, of what you and I had done, a fairly large PR coming in, and so the thought was maybe we could identify, and I would do this, but kind of identify what the in that large PR, maybe like three different PRs that were a little bit easier to kind of move through a poll. A pull request process. Um, okay. Um, well, so when I, I originally started it off in the word in the Google Doc, really started it off that way. Um, it was basically just trying to take each sec take each sec take the questions and the long list of questions and make them into a, um, something that could be copy pasted by people. Yep. Um, mm. And uh, just, because there was just too much, too many. Um, Ruth, Ruth is still here. Ruth did a great job. I think Ruth's still there, right? Yes, Ruth is still yeah. here. Um, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just trying to to, um, to combine a couple of the questions to make it that you would put in there. Um, uh, but honestly, I faced the same problem. Um, basically, the question, a lot of the issues are 
um, Project Burnout is a uh, is a uh, is an outcome in a lot of ways. In a lot, of, in a lot of these things, we're measuring the the <laughs> what causes Project Burnout instead of what um, instead of uh, so you're measuring cause. You are you measuring the cause or the effect? So, but we have to do both. That's okay. Um, so I'm okay if you if you pause things. I'm not. I basically uh, that DC. I got messed up by DCO. I had never. I basically had to. Um, had to. <laughs> There's a little bot that will do it for you if you don't know that. Well, it didn't work. Oh. Okay. I mean, like, basically, like installing a little thing on my. Yeah, yeah, you know, in your browser. Yeah, it didn't work. Oh, I tried. Right. I tried multiple browsers, <laughs> and I basically did nothing. Nothing, and that's so I spent like four or five hours trying to do that on two different in over two different days, and I basically ended up just having to install uh, GitHub Desktop and have a. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, I'm not a developer, so I'm like, okay, well. It's, if it makes you feel any better, I did not know that there was a bot for it. I've just been manually typing them in this whole time. Well, I tried, <laughs> I tried typing in the sign off also, and it didn't work either. Yeah, I don't know commit. what I did wrong, and I still don't know. But it inspired me to write a little article about it. Um, I don't know what, just feel back, I don't, I pasted something at the bottom of this notes. I, um, uh, from uh, Linux Foundation and Harvard report the relevant the chat bot PR. Um, I put two tr two questions, the results from two charts from two questions at the bottom of this week and basically just looks about how different communication methods are being used by FOSS projects. Thank and, you for sharing that. And that's just relevant to the chatbot conversation. Thank you. Uh, so well, this was, we are at the end of our time, folks. This was super productive. Um, just quick recap again, DNI badging, making progress there, Justin, Super happy to have you be part of the team um, with respect to DNI reflection. And then great to get through some of these comments on the metrics that are going through the release period. So we didn't make it through anything else. And Ruth, it's good to see you. And Anita, it's good to see you. And Amy, I hope your chickens are doing all right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi, Anita. All right, so till next week or the next time we see you around, um, take care, everybody. Thank you. Have a good one. Thanks, all. Bye, everyone. Okay, bye. Bye.